Okay, I am here at the Polyglot Gathering in Prague, Czechia, and I'm excited to meet again with uh, Tim Keeley. Tim Keeley, if you didn't know, was also one of the uh, organizers for the Polyglot Conference event in Fukuoka, Japan, uh, which is where you live and uh, where he's lived for many years. And um, we got a chance to interview you then, yes. and so I'm excited to pleasure. interview you again. It's good to see you again. And I've seen you trotting around the world. Uh, we keep meeting in different places. Last time was Malaysia, and then before that was in Budapest. Yes. So um, now again in, in the Czech. Um, yes. If you ever come to Taiwan, we'll have to meet up if Certainly. you're ever in town. Certainly. But um, it's, it's good Taipei. to see you again. Um, well, I'm out, outside of Taipei in southern mm. Taiwan, but okay. we can arrange. All right. So um, as you know, at these events, we get to put all of our languages on here. He's got about 100, so it's just like, wow. Well, I think there's 40-something on there. <laughs> it looks like 100. <laughs> 40, 100. <laughs> yeah. I, I say 47 languages, okay. but uh, usually I say 30 because, uh, yeah, 30 is what I can communicate in. Right. So yeah. you gave some interesting talks. You gave us um, a little briefing on the... Uh, Asian languages and yes. how to wrap your head around making sentences and that, and then you did one on those Slavic languages. And how many people can come to a language event and give talks on both Asian languages and Slavic languages? That's very impressive. Uh, it's quite a mix. I mean, that's because uh, in my younger years, uh, so uh, I left, uh, grew up in Florida, and I left in 1974. Okay, so I'm coming up on 68 years old. And so I've spent most of my life outside the U.S. You thrive in places where they don't speak English, is that right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I avoided English. Avoided English. I avoided English like a plague. Like a plague. And I didn't even go to England until many, many years later. Okay. And, I, and I, I studied abroad a lot. I studied at Universidad de Los Andes in Bogota. I studied in Switzerland, in Geneva. I studied in Poland and, and in, in Japan. In Australia, but they do speak English there, but how to get a PhD. <laughs> you actually taught at a university in Thailand. Yes, right? exactly. Yes, I taught at Chulongon, which is the oldest and most prestigious uh, institute there. And uh, yeah, that was a great experience. And actually, I learned Thai in order to do, well, because I like the language, but really in order to do research there, because mm -hmm. I had to do interviews in Thai and English. Now get this, Tim actually published and wrote a book in Thai language. Yes. In Thai, oh, about, you know about, about a different topic, about <laughs> yes. like economy or something, right? It, well, it's about what it's like to work at a Japanese uh, company. Okay. Yeah, in Thailand. You wrote the so, book in Thai. So yes. there you go. With this the help is, of another professor who checked it for me. But so yes, we, we hope our audience can be inspired and aspire to the same lofty goals as you have achieved. Yes. Not only that, um, some other tidbits that I've learned about you over the years is that um, you take these really crazy adventures through southern Asia, the subcontinent, up into the Himalayas, and then there are yes. a bunch of languages in there. What? Tell us a really brief, quick okay, intro to so, that. Okay, so, yeah, I fell in love with the Himalayas, and before that, I'd been on the Tibetan side as early as 1984, um, but then I discovered the Himalayas from the Nepali side, from Nepal, from India, but Sikkim, you know, so the northern areas there. Sikkim is the little part between Nepal and Bhutan, is that yeah, right? Yeah, and they speak Nepali I there, not, not Hindi. Remember my... <laughs> yeah, the whole me. area. Ne Nepali is really the lingua franca through, for most of the Himalayas. Okay. Until you get to Pakistan. Okay. Okay, yeah. And so uh, I got interested in Tibetan and uh, then the Tibetan-related languages. The two I studied most were Tamang. So you're conversational in Nepali, first of all. Oh, yeah, I read and write Nepali. And so you're also able to uh, springboard into Hindi and Bengali? Oh, yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, for Hindi, you, you have the same roots, and then you just you're, you learn how to conjugate them differently, uh, and then you have lexical similarity of well over 70%. Um, so, yeah. Wow, a, lot, okay. a, lot of, a lot of Nepalis watch uh, movies and such in Hindi, but they don't speak it. So you, uh, you also mentioned the language Tamang, which is yeah. in the Himalayas. Tamang, Tamang is, Tamangric languages is a subgroup in the Tibetan, Sino-Tibetan, Sino, um, Sino okay. and um, it's the largest in Nepal, it's 5% of the population. It's really it's cool about that one it is that when I was in Narfu, which are these two villages 
that are above Manang area, Annapurna area of Nepal, in, in western Nepal. And um, just walk around the village. You have to get a special permit for this one. It costs a little bit more. It's not many people are walking through there. And I heard something that sounded like, oh, I understood that. And it wasn't Nepali. And so I started speaking to them in Tamang. And they went, uh, you know, they were they're, they're quite surprised. And we couldn't have a complicated conversation, but there are a number of things I could say. I bet that, everybody in Nepal is surprised when they meet you. Well, they're surprised. You must be some sort of a personality, like a... Well, a okay, so for example... A celebrity. It's, it's happened like <laughs> the first time I was trekking in the Annapurna region. By the time I got to the next uh, guest house area... They knew I was coming because I would be a guide along the way or something, and I was just say, on my own taking it. And I'd speak to them in Nepali, and they'd say, hey, there's a guy. And the news, the news traveled yeah. fast. And, and, the, and the news traveled quite quickly. <laughs> um, but I think the most uh, interesting experience I had was uh, in Lantang, which is actually the closest trekking area to uh, Kathmandu. And there, there's a Taman, there's, they have the Tamang heritage Trek. So a lot of Taman speakers and a lot of Tibetan speakers who have come across the border. It's just like three hours drive, okay? And they flee into Nepal. So I'm staying at a guest house, and my friend here is Tamang, and the owner is Tibetan. And I'm speaking both in Tamang and Tibetan. And these guys, are, Nepali guys, are sitting here, and they're like this because they're very surprised because they've been doing guiding this area for 15, 20 years, but they don't speak the language. And you just walk in from overseas. And just walk in from and overseas. Speaking their and, language. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah they, they thought well, that was a little bit unusual. So, for, for um, uh, an under resourced language like Tamang, what was your approach for actually acquiring okay. the language before you that, showed up? That, that was a tough <laughs> one. Uh, okay. you, I was able to find some phrase books, but sometimes the phrases books were oriented towards NGOs. So they're talking about uh, digging wells and women having power and not, not your, normal, your normal type conversation. But as a professor in Japan, uh, over the last, uh, let's say, uh, I would say 15 years, I, I had a lot of Nepalese. <laughs> and so I had Taman speakers, uh. and, and especially one Taman speaker who was very proud of her Taman, okay. even though her last name is Gurung which is another oh. language and another ethnic group, it's only because her father joined the Indian army, and Gurung makes them think of power, but Tamang doesn't. Oh, so they okay. changed his last name so he could join the Indian army. So I was lucky to have my student to help so, me. So, Tim, you're a busy guy, and you've learned all the languages in the world. What, is, what challenge remains for you? What are you aspiring to do well, in, in, in actually, your last there's, chapter? There, there, there's, <laughs> there's quite a few left. And okay. Of what I've wanted to do ever since 1982, uh, so I had already gone to Japan and immigrated there. I'd come from Poland. I had finished two years studying in Poland. And so I want to go back to Poland to visit again. So I took the Siberian Express. On the way back from Poland, I, I went to Georgia, Armenia, but also Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzia, and other areas where they speak a Turkic language. And I spoke to them in Russian, okay. uh, so there was no problem, but I was interested in learning it. Yes. And so that, so Turkish and Turkish-related languages, like probably I guess I would go for maybe Kyrgyz, uh, Kazaki is a bigger country, but many Kazakis don't speak Kazaki, even though yeah. they're ethnically Kazaki. But with Kyrgyz, you also get Kazakh as a, as yes, a plus exactly. one. Yes, so. exactly. Right, exactly. Yeah, you're aware and of I, that then. Mm. But also, uh, here in town, you take the Ubers and the, the, the drivers, you, you check their name on the app first, and I know right away they're Uzbek. Yeah. So I get in the car, I don't, I don't speak Uzbek, I don't Turk, Turkish yet, but I... You can yeah. do the, do the well, Russian with them, and they're just very happy to, like, chat I was, with you. I was in Moscow for... the. The talent show, you know, amazing people. Uh, just uh, around six weeks ago, they flew me there. And hotel, taxi drivers, all from Kyrgyz, Kyrgyzstan. Oh, really? Wow, okay. Kyrgyzstan. Yeah. So your next aspiration is Turkic, um, languages. Turkic languages. And, 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 and improving my uh, Tibetan, Tibetan and Tibetan-related languages. I would like to give you a challenge. Okay. You don't have to do it in the next couple of years or anything, but I hope to come back around to you in a few years because it's one of my own challenges are Dravidian languages. I'm 
focusing on Canada, so I can kind of jump okay. springboard back yeah, into Tamil. Awesome. I'm going to go to Tamil first, though. Yeah, I'm going to probably use that to springboard into Tamil. Well, why, why wouldn't you start with Tamil? Well, I well with Canada, there's like a big tech center there in, in, yeah, in yeah. Bangalore. And right, right. also, there's a few sound changes, like huh becomes pu, you know, these yeah. kinds of things. But and there, there's Malayalam mutual is, intelligibility, right? No. No. They're, they're oh. Very, very different languages. The only two that are very similar are like Malayalam and Tamil. Okay. And then it takes a little bit of effort to really, but like the verb conjugations, there's something similar with the, like the, the, the numbers and the pronouns. Other right. than that, even the verb, unless they're borrowed from Hindi, most of the verbs are different. Yeah. So it's still, there's only like roots. Yeah. I mean, it's like Greek and Russian. <laughs> uh, okay. So okay. Um, there are still some, some distance between them, but I would like to learn Canada and then springboard into I mean, either Telugu or Tamil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but, I think um, it's Tamil just because... What are the oldest languages? I'm it's a sure. fa- it's a it's a yeah. fascinating language family, and I would like to see another major polyglot tackle one of them so that we can kind of talk about it in the future. Okay, so. let's go for Tamil. Okay, I'll then, do Tamil. So you you you, you have to work Canada. faster because you're going to do that afterwards. Uh, yeah, but I won't yeah, get yeah. started on that for a while, so it probably works out the same. But way. you can, um, you know, when we were in Penang last year. Uh, I was using the basic ta- uh, Tamil and greetings when going to the restaurants and say yeah. hi to people. Right, right. Just, man, they were just like, whoa, they were just so happy. I was well, just like, man. Well, <laughs> but we get this all the time. I'm a Japanese citizen, you're a Taiwanese citizen. So when you pull yeah, out your yeah, passport, yeah. you know. always get that anyway, I know, right? I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah th- this is a rare occurrence where you get... Um, two guys like us who have Asian passports. Yes. Okay, thank and you very I'm more much. I'm Asian Tim. than many Asians. <laughs> <laughs> Great talking to you. Same, same. Yeah.